Oh, ye of little faith. Yeah. Come on. Are you serious? You're gonna doubt? We've got the boss, Uni on tow here. Where is the downside of that? Hey everyone, welcome back to Xenoblade Chronicles 3. In the last episode, we literally cleaned up in Agnes Castle, and now we decide let's take a bit of brevity and let's just help out the city. Lord knows they might need a hand. Mm -hmm. You know, seeing how the they nearly got blown oh, to bits. But anyway though, with that said, we are going to be focusing on side quests in this one, particularly one that involves Monica, and hopefully enlisting her to aid in our side. Oh, red light of better than Tatsu, please guide the way. <laughs> I mean, I'm not wrong. It's the ancient light of I'm better than Tatsu, nah, 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 nah. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, I mean, to be fair, I think anything would be better than Tatsu. I mean, for God's sake, these two nameless NPCs, they're better than Tatsu. You know why? Because they actually give you something. <laughs> it's not much, but it's something. At least it gives us a problem to solve. Tatsu is a problem. That just can't be solved unless you count control delete. Mm. But I digress. Man, it is it just feels so good to be able to just relax, you know? Not have to worry about the game going a hundred miles an hour on fun story. Yeah, because since we've had a bit of break since our last episode, it's I've been just doing some thinking of the, of the scenes and like the scene when Noah and Mio had a baby. Mm -hmm. It makes me wonder if the baby is still alive because I don't think it applies to the same tattoo logic that, that Noah and Mio had. And if they are alive, are they a console member? Oh my god. <laughs> Ooh, what if it's console ends grandfather? Yeah. What if he somehow became ends own granddad? Wow. You never know. Monica, can we talk? What's up? Sounds ominous. We were hoping we could ask you about someone. Guernica, in fact. About dad. Everyone in the city speaks so highly of him, but we still don't know a whole lot about him. I think we owe him that much. All right. Where do you want to start? You were brought up by him, right? So we thought you'd probably understand him better than anyone else. Ha! I wish that were the case. The Guernica Van Damme that I knew was a man that I always looked up to. He was always busy keeping the city together or fighting out on the front line. Always distant. After I chose a military life, he didn't even talk to me like a parent anymore. You mean... you weren't on very good terms? I got to know the man, I think. But not the father. I just thought... that we'd have more time together. Huh. Hey, boss. You're making the kids feel guilty. <sighs> Sorry. I don't blame you guys for any of this. Dad, Guernica, died in the line of duty, trying to accomplish his aim. But that's not all. He died fighting for what he believed in, and he saw it through. Of that much, I'm sure. For what he believed in? Well... About that, there still might be a bit of unfinished business there. He sure was adamant about getting stuff home to people. Yeah, for certain. Sorry, what do you mean exactly? Personal effects from the deceased. Things that family and friends can remember them by. We don't leave any other mark behind that says, we were here, you see? If there are people waiting for you, then you just want to leave something behind, whatever it may be. I was in the rear guard. I know just how dangerous that battlefield was. <laughs> Maybe it's better not to dwell on that. Hmm. 
but... There are personal items that have been left behind, though, right? Huh? Maybe... You'd let us do something to help out with that. It must be really painful for the people who never got the chance for closure. Yeah, right? I'm starting to get a handle on how they see things in the city. Sort of. But if there's something we can do about it, I want to try to help. I appreciate the sentiment, guys. But why go to all this trouble? Well, we'll get some closure from doing this too. We were losing friends every day. And before we became Uroboros, some of us used to be Offseers. Guernica went to all that trouble for others. And when it happened, he was thinking of everyone waiting for him in the city. So I'd like to help his voice find its way. Hmm. Much appreciated. Speaking personally, good on you. Travis, could you pull up the tactical register? Roger that. Give me a moment. There's the data. We've got a list of deceased soldiers and the likely locations where they fell. Could you check out the waypoints around Alfeso Valley? That's some impressive precision. Kind of you to notice. See, that's the thing about us lost numbers. We just don't know when to quit. <laughs> okay, guys. It's up to you now. When you're done, could you meet me at the Remembrance Stones? Got it. You have my word. Huh. Would you believe it? I definitely believe it. Ah, so he showed up. Are we getting more of that bounty? Yeah, you've been reading well in quite a few of those flame clocks now, huh? The fighting's only going to get more fierce from now on. I hope you'd be helpful with we'll out with that. Crystal earrings, I'll take it. So, Mobius on as united as they make themselves out to be, eh? Not too different from our Senate. I keep hearing this word Senate, but I don't know what it means. It sounds like my name. Oh my god. It's a committee made up of six houses. Sure, they're always blocking this or that, but they're also a storehouse of, of know-how. Plus, would you tell no, this not to stop eating my legs? <laughs> when they aren't squabbling over ideology, and they share knowledge in a sh and set a direction for the city. The one with ultimate responsibility we call the Elder. Just one of the many burdens the boss is shouldering right now. Man. Even after a while, we still learn more about the city. And for me, I kind of feel for the main six cast. Yeah. I mean, because here's the thing. You walk into a an entirely new type of person who doesn't age or or does age is completely different to your way of life learning what parents and kids are and then and then finding out oh you mean parents can also be a bit of an arsehole too yeah it's just like one cold slap of reality after another it's like hey your life is a lie Hey, you're being held back. Hey, there's a city who's living a life quote-unquote better than you. Hey, guess what? You arrived in the city. Fun fact, they're fighting. And guess what? People in there, they're all assholes. It's like, yeah, it's one thing after another. It's like escaping to an entirely different planet with, quote-unquote, the best the best of a country or a planet. And then, more often than not, those people turn out as be racists, assholes, or just selfish people. Yeah. <laughs> if only there was a game for that. Uh -huh. On the Wii U. With giant robots. And a game that's been begging for a port ever since. It might be sharing this game's namesake. Well, I have no clue. I bet you were in a lot of pain. It's okay, we'll take your stuff back. He was long ago. Can I just say, I thought I said yeehaw for a second. <laughs> oh, yes. My favorite character, yeehaw. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe someone's Senna can, um, 
can um, elate to. Wow, they sound just like me. Take that, Testudio. I'll do my best. You'll have no Phil Collins parodies on me. All under control. If we're gonna fight, might as well try. Try. Gondor's class. Uh huh. And yeah, sure. We we should probably go over that. Mm -hmm. um, um. Off screen, we have changed a few people's classes around. As you can see, Senna is obviously taking the uh, Gondor moniker. Noah has actually taken on Unis. A Uni's healing staff for, um, role. And also, Mio has changed to, to a Shearer's. So, we're still keeping even defense, even offense, and healing. Just switch them around a bit. Experimentation. Why not? Because I am definitely looking forward to see how our brawling class can do. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, I kind of feel like it suits Senna would be, would be the one uh, to do it. Yeah. It's like, yep, I can punch you all to bits. And for me, I can somewhat see a synergy on Gondor's class as well as Fiona's. Like, just the buffs on buffs on buffs and then Gondor's just, like, dedication to offense. Mm -hmm. Like, man, that can hit pretty hard. Hey, have you heard? Your queen's dead. Yeah. We're your public enemy number one of all nations now. Whether it's the consoles, whether it's Agnes or Kevus, or even the few far in between. Does she watch now? We're gonna get people from the city being pissed off because of Shania. Yeah. No, she was the fan club president of whatever subjects today. And it's your fault that she died. In which we can say, it's okay guys, she died, but she lived. <laughs> it works regarding the context, okay? Lance, you are enjoying that flag way too much. Ah, oh, man. I'm just really impressed that we are this far in the game and we're still picking up classes and new gameplay styles. Yeah. I feel like the closest thing I could compare it to is probably either Xenoblade 2's Blades or even the partners in Xenoblade X. There's plenty of different styles there. I'm also really glad they improved on X and like instead of going out and looking for these party members, you can just pick them in the menu. Yeah, again, one of the things that you definitely would think that, yeah, maybe, maybe it's one of the reasons why it ain't got a port, but you know. Yeah. So on and so forth. But hopefully, now that Xenoblade Chronicles 3 is out and about, it'll give Monolith plenty of time to choose what to do next. Because I honestly wouldn't mind if, like, Xenoblade X was just on its own. Like, have it be its own series. Mm-hmm. Not connecting to the main line either way. Because, again, I know I've drawn this comparison a few times, but still. It's still a thing. You know how Final Fantasy has many, many spin-offs? Like, hey, Final Fantasy, uh, um, uh, oh, what's the fighting game called? Dissidia. Or Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles. Mm hmm. Like, you can have. spin offs, I suppose. Just have X beat the X Chronicles. The Adventures of Elmer and her intrepid sidekicks and stupid Tatsu. <laughs> Hopefully, Tatsu's not gonna be in there. No, I would celebrate if they. S if, if the first opening text. Or even like a blurb on the back of the box, like, does not contain Tatsu. <laughs> Instant buy! Yeah. <laughs> or just has a screenshot of Tatsu's corpse. Mm hmm. It's like, yep, 
<laughs> yep. We've brought their belongings. Thanks. Means a lot. Can you lay them out here? Now you mention it, didn't Monica put an eye patch here? Yeah, that was Guernica's. What does it mean exactly, placing people's belongings here? Uh, how can I explain it? Um, you guys have off-seeing, right? I guess this is our version of that. Off-seeing for city folk? Hmm. You got here first. Boss, we were waiting for you. Brother, you. Zuo. They made it back. Hiwa. You always kept such good care of this. Now look at it. I just wish that we could have talked more. But you're home now. Thanks to you, these people got a chance to say farewell to their loved ones. And I got to fulfill Dad's dying wish. Thank you. They weren't just sacrifices. They've entrusted us all with the future. As the Founders did, looking back is not an option. So that was enough seeing. The sound of that music, it's really something else. I don't think anyone here will forget this day as long as they live. The Fallen never got to win their battles, but maybe now they can get some rest. Yeah, finally. Speaking of, you ought to get some rest, too. You're gonna to be pretty busy from now on. You said it, boss. W wait, just how busy are we talking here? From now on, I'll be traveling with Noah's crew. Huh? But then who's gonna handle things in the city? You'll be here, won't you, Travis? <sighs> like father, like daughter, eh? 
Dad spent his life on the front line, and I want to carry on that tradition. I understood that when I heard the Offseer's play. It has to be me. I have to carry on his legacy, fulfill his hopes. I'll fight for you now. Call on me anytime you need my help. Thank you. That's truly heartening. I hope we'll get to know each other outside of battle too. There's so much I'd like to ask you about yourself, the city. My worries. A word of warning, guys. The boss's stories are long. If you've got time to rip on the boss, I might just assign you some more duties, Travis. Oh. Well, at least I won't have to worry about the city while I'm gone. Just holler if you need me. We'll take you up on that. And with that, we gained one more hero and a little bit of perspective. The battle for the Boss Vanguard Monica. And we're on the front line. Where the uni takes it? Yeah. Oh well. Lost Vanguard Defender protects allies by deploying fields. Specializes in countering enemy attacks and can do damage while guarding. Nice. So a counter. Yeah, spike. <laughs> I welcome that because it's been oh, something that's not way. in our face, but it's something that I like dealing. Mm. Because I feel smug whilst doing it. Mm. But man, I gotta say, I love that little cutscene for many, many, many reasons. For one, of course it's heartwarming, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And of course the production value of just having voice acting and proper animations for it and seeing everything off. But there is another thing and it does bring up a thing that I'm kind of morbidly looking forward to. And I'll explain why. Um, I'm kind of looking forward to seeing the end credits of this game. Not because I want to see the end of this game as quickly as I, as I can, lord no. No. <laughs> no, no. I want to see the full, full voice cast for everyone who's done voices in this game. Because obviously, you've got the main six, and of course you've got and of course you've got Jenna Coleman coming back as Melia, and you've also had Nia's voice actor voice actor returning. And I've also heard Nia's voice actor voice, I think it was during the segment with uh, Fiona, uh, with one of her allies. And I think in that cutscene we heard, I could have sworn I also heard Morag's voice actor. Hmm. I'll have to listen to it again in editing. Yeah, because for me, I could have sworn I heard it. And one of the reasons why is that I love the sense of not only in that cutscene did you see a lot of people coming together to see people off, I kind of like the, the theory that all of the voice actors who've done previous work in Xenoblade games come into this game and just have, like, I don't know, a few words doesn't have to be anything major, just like, hey, everyone's here, essentially. Mm-hmm. Because let's face it, as we've said to death in this series, it's a culmination of everything from Xenoblade. So, why not all the voice actors? I mean, me. Monolith is not afraid about bringing in a lot of people. Yeah. Oh, uh, Grace married. Hello. Well, well, well. Grace, Grace, and oh my God, are you serious? <laughs> oh, who'd have thought Monolith likes hospital dramas? <laughs> For God, so, I mean, to be fair, it's not the first time that Monolith has referenced TV shows in the past. I mean, for God's sake, I can remember the original having a reference to the 80s cartoon Gems and the Holograms. The head of one of the six houses lives here. Don't embarrass yourselves. But just having a reference to Grey's Anatomy? Yeah! It's like, really? <laughs> really? Mm. I mean, why can't you just have something that says Hobby City or Casualty? Or how about a crowning street? <laughs> I wonder if there's a, a synonym for that. Or how about in the city? 
Oi, mate, we're a gang, and we're from the East End of the city. We call ourselves the East Enders. <laughs> Just going to run nothing out of the ordinary. Should be safe to use. <laughs> Gray just is now. He's very talkative. He's too, he's giving us a tour. <laughs> no, I just feel like he's talking just so we don't br we don't bring up his stuff. Mm -hmm. We should talk about this. Gray, you come from the city, don't you? Yeah. No need to be so standoffish, mate. You're allowed to talk, you know. Don't use your bother with trivial stuff. So you have a wife, don't you? Do you want to go and see her? Fine, either way. Come on, that's no good. She'll want to see you. Hmm. You can always drop in while she give you your board for the lost no numbers. Oh yeah, you kept all that about the lost numbers quiet, didn't you? I told you don't talk about unimportant stuff. Cannot believe this bloke. Let's have it out then. Proposal? Let's go and see this wife of yours. Hmm. I'm taking your silence as a yes. Good work, team. Let's go. Lovebirds. Love birds. <laughs> I'm not a lovebird. Piss off. We have so many things to talk about. Yeah. Oh my god. And today's story is... The textbook. Oh, Tyon, you've been keeping up with your Agnes textbook reading, right? Isn't that a bit pointless now? I mean, since we're all on the same side and all that. Here's the thing. Before I became Ouroboros, I believed implicitly that every word in there was correct and accurate. That if I practiced what I taught, all would turn out to the benefit of the colony and my queen. But now, now that I know, as, as do we all, that it was no more than Moby's deception. Right, so why waste any more time on it? Because if you think about it, the textbooks contain information advantageous to the Mobius. Do you see what I'm saying? If I can reverse engineer and analyze this ad advantageous information, I could find out about their real goals and intentions. Whoa, so you're reading them to, like, learn more about our enemy? Information forms the basis of strategy. That's elementary tactician know-how. It's also not like everything in there is backwards nonsense either. Consider the case of Colin Nine's fields, for instance. So we can't blindly trust what we read. We have to sort through the information and make our own minds up? I'm glad you're so quick on the uptake. It's almost like you shouldn't read and believe everything you hear, whether it's in the newspapers, the internet, but you know, who wants to be topical now, <laughs> nowadays? <laughs> Apparently the lost numbers can use all different kinds of blades, just like us. Monica did say that the city's people were a Rizzi of one kind with the Mobius. So you'd say that explains the similarities of us? Yeah, okay, I can see that. Even so, though, it's not people that can master fighting with multiple blade forms, it seems. If you don't commit, your form's got to be sloppy and you're going to ha get bad habits. I think I'll always prefer using what I'm good at. I like to get at least a basic understanding of all of them. Nothing beats flexibility on the battlefield. Me? I'm a power girl through and through. What the sparks of power girl? Ah, uh, never mind. I call you Drift. It's important to remember, though, even though we have Ouroboros powers, it's still a matter of effort to achieve proficiency. I mean, you could have had Power Puff to that. It would have been another reference to a TV show. Yeah. Let's catch up on stuff. The classic version, not the modern one. Tosh. You know, I'm a sturdy guy and all, but even I wouldn't have to do any more of that prison labor crap. Last number, soldiers had to do it every day at the prison camp, right? Talk about rough. And some of them had been in prison for 10 years or more. In our world, that's like working from our first term right through to the 10th and then some. That must have taken incredible willpower. The people of the city have fought against Mobius for years and months be beyond the counting. The resilience fostered by enduring such strain must be what helped them survive. Makes kinda sense. Guess there's a lesson there we could bear to learn too. Go to show, they know a thing or two about sacrifices too. We still got a ways to go, haven't we? Yeah, we best sure up our resolve so we can stand alongside them without shame. Let's catch up on stuff. 
It seems Millic Meadows isn't the only place with a rust out for honest, huh? Yeah. If I had to guess, I'd say they're scattered all over over Ionis. What bothers me is how total they all are. Surely that can't be standard practice, right? Phronius come in different flame clock ranks. If they aren't used to their strengths, the defeat could be crushing. Retrieval and transportation for Phronius also comes with cost. Leaving it to rot on the field can sometimes be simplest. And then it turns into a monster breeding ground. Man, it makes my blood boil a bit. But even abandoned, they can contain a wealth of supplies. I think they'll prove you useful on our journey. For sure. If we see one anywhere, we should make an effort to check it out. Lord knows we we try. Mm-hmm. Let's keep things on a tight loop. But anyway, guys, though, I think that is going to be it for this episode. So, we got to learn more about the city. About Grey's love life. Yeah. <laughs> and... We've also got Monica by our side, who's definitely not shirking her duties. And it <laughs> may or may not be because of Shania and a desire to kick her ass. Yeah. <laughs> Lord knows, I can't wait for that. But until then, guys, thank you all for watching. If you like this episode, then please be sure to like it. And of course, if you want to follow us on this Xenoblade Chronicles free journey, then by all means, please subscribe to see more. And we'll see you next time. Thank you for watching. Until then. Monica, where are you going? You're part of us, right? You did really well out there. The results even better than I'd hoped for. We exposed the city to some danger, but the reward far outweighed the risks. You even smashed the castle's flame clock. That's hard to credit. And then you're coming with us again next time. <laughs> well, keep away, guys. Thanks for watching. See you next time. <laughs>